with your smell. What the bird is barbecuing. G'day fans of the NPL, it is your boy The Verd, coach of the Tampa Bay Frog Eaters. It feels so weird saying that sentence to you guys. Um, like, I've been an analyst of this league for two straight years, so getting the chance to perform in majors is wild, and I am so looking forward to the opportunity. And, I mean, they gave us a pretty tough challenge for week one. Uh, Tampa Bay Frog Eaters are up against the Florida Persians, coached by a top-tier boy, or Seb. Uh, he and I, you know, we're good mates. We've um, known each other for a while now, and I think it's going to be a really good game. I'm definitely excited, more excited than nervous for it, I think, just because it's the first game of this, you know, massive league that, you know, I really want to be performing well in, you know, really want to put my best foot forward. So the matchup, I guess, is what we'll talk about first. I'm going to, like, as I always do with these team builders, try and go a bit more in depth. What I'm going to be doing different from now, though, is I'm going to be uploading team builders, um before the battle, I'm not going to do them both in the same video, I'm going to do them separately, so you have your team builder, and then you have your battle, so hopefully you guys enjoy that extra content on the channel, but Seb's team is like incredibly strong, when I first started drafting it, I was like, this man's just drafting Gen 5, um, it's like Gen 6 rain, it's pretty cool, um, definitely like a lot of his threats, it's classic like black and white offense at the start too, but nothing to slouch on, three water types, very very scary uh, for my team, but I feel the uh, team that I've created here, should be able to handle most of the things that he can throw at me, so I'm going to kind of break them down in their processes and what they do, and then, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy that. But kicking things off here, we have The Rock, my Nihilego. Um, Sash, because it's basically not really a suicide lead, but more of just a standard lead. The, the premise is that it can lead against anything on my opponent's team and get up rocks, turn one. That is the uh, huge important thing that it has to do is get up those rocks. Uh, they are paramount to the success of my team this week because he has um, mons like Tornadus and Pelipper, mons that don't want to switch in on those rocks and take that damage that I can really pressure with this team. Um, and it also just like gets chip on Galvantula. So the basic premise is that uh, this happened a few times in Mox. If he does have Galvantula on the team, there's a very good chance he'll lead with it. So turn one, I actually want to click the Sludge Wave because it won't kill him, but it will put him in rocks range. And then the next turn, I want to proceed to click rocks, because if I go for rocks turn one as he goes for webs, then he'll switch out with a full health Garvantula. Whereas if I go for sludge wave and then go for rocks as he switches out, then he's pressured to try and defog with Pelipper. And he might think that he can get away with defogging with Pelipper, but unfortunately for Seb, I am going to be packing the Thunder this week, because 100% uh, accurate in rain, it will Oko Pelipper. Funnily enough, V is a max HP Wakanberry Pelipper. It, uh, it has an 87.5% chance to Oko that Pelipper straight up. So that is really, really good for us. Um, we got to pressure his clearance. Uh, the moveset wise was really tough to decide because um, Nihilego kind of suffered a little bit from four move slot syndrome trying to get the coverage. The other really massive downside of this Nihilego set was that I wanted to run HP fighting for that Bishop to prevent it from just coming in for free. But unfortunately, um, Nihilego cannot have a, it must always have, um, I think it's three perfect IVs. And in order to run HP fighting, you have to have four IVs changed. So because of that, it means that uh, Nihilego is not able to have HP fighting, which sucks. However, Thunder can do a tremendous amount to Bishop. It does like 59% minimum. Uh, so I can cripple Bishop that way. And, you know, it won't let him get up the free OC. Even if he does SD, I do obviously have things like Bulu and Zygarde and Kartana in the back that can deal with a setup Bishop if need be. But... It's still able to get damage. Yes, there is a chance that Thunder can miss. Uh, it is a risk I'm willing to take because I feel that he should be bringing rain. Uh, that should be definitely something that he does, but we'll have to wait and see if that's what he does. And then HP Ice is just on there for uh, his Garchomp. I feel like that would be the other potential lead that he has. It could be Scarfed, it could be Rocks, but uh, basically my plan is just to kind of lead with Nihilego and go for either HP Ice turn one against Chomp or just go for my Rocks and just scout to see if he's Scarfed or if he is a more defensive spread, because the more I can weaken Chomp, the better it is for things like uh, Bulu, Kartana, and Pinsa in the matchup. But yeah, this is really solid set. Speed-wise, I am creeping Garchomp. Um, not able to outspeed other Mons on his team, such as uh, Keldeo and uh, Tornadus, but still a very decent speed tier. Still a really solid Mon for me to have in this matchup. I feel like it's just a really solid lead in general against this team. But moving on, we have um, one of my two more defensive Pokemon this week. Uh, i got Ty Dillinger, the Tentacruel here. Holding the Sugarberry, 
uh, running a really, really nice set for this matchup. Uh, Toxic Spikes are fantastic against my opponent's team. His only way to remove hazards is Defog on either Mew or Pelipper, I believe. Uh, both of which, you know, I can pressure a lot. Like Mew, in order to get rid of hazards, then has to take the poison. And Pelipper, a lot of the time, like I said, with Nihalego, I'm pressuring it. And with, like, so many more mons on my team, it's always under a bit of duress. But I got Rapid Spin there as well, because I feel like he will set up the web stem. And the best thing as well is I'm running the clear body, so that, um... Webs don't affect me, which means I'll be able to outspeed things like Mega Pert and be able to spin away if I need to. I'm running the Sugarberry also for Mega Pert, so that Adamant Swamp Pert cannot knock me out. But it also holds a secondary effect, which is why you see Giga Drain. Uh, the plan is because I'm bringing Bulu, I'm going to be under Grassy Terrain. My defensive plan against Pert is to go hard Bulu on Pert as it goes for hopefully EQ or Waterfall, and I take like a champion. And then I double back into Tentacruel as he reveals either I'm assuming Sludge Wave or Ice Punch. And then Tentacle can take that, and then because of the Sugarberry and the Grassy Terrain, I will swallow up any Earthquake hit that he goes for, and I can go for the Giga Drain. Um, and the uh, Grassy Terrain boosted Giga Drain will do a ridiculous amount. I believe it does like 78% minimum to his uh, Swamp Hurt, which will put him straight into Pincer Range, as you'll see later on. And then Scald is just on there because uh, potentially the Rain Boost, as well as the chance to get Burns, is always lovely. But yeah, it's a Speed Creeping Swamp Hurt, so I can always get a spin off if he doesn't have Rain Up. Which is really important because getting rid of webs gives a good chance for my late mons on this team to really, really put in work. But moving on to probably the best, like this set, um, I can't take all the credit for this set. This was kind of co-designed. The move set was um, created by the uh, Flying Bird. Uh, we, he and I were sitting down and having a chat about this matchup, and one of the things he said was like Zygarde has a really good matchup against a lot of his team, but obviously Tangrowth can wall it quite nicely, and we were trying to think of a really cool way. To take advantage of that and also the fact that things like Gramble can suffer from this too and so we came up with this really cool Zygarde set basically it's creeping um, things like Bisharp and uh, the Mega Pert again the premise is that you can get up a sub as he switches out to Tangrowth go for a thousand waves as he most likely reveals that he has the um, the HP ice but then we've trapped in thousand waves you don't know because obviously a lot of times you're probably using a uh, thousand arrows Thousand Waves is a trapping move that traps them in and they can't switch, so like a uh, mean look. And then you proceed to fire off a Toxic. I have a lot of Spadef investment in the Zygarde, so I can take an HB Ice just fine. And I go for the Toxic, and then I can proceed to spam, protect, and substitute over and over again. And uh, eventually, hopefully with the Leftovers Recovery and the uh, stalling that I do, I will be able to successfully knock out this Tangrowth to, um, to poison damage, which will be phenomenal. And that will be just a massive threat off the field. Because as you can see, I have a Bulu and a Kartana. And the best checks to both of those is by far, like, Tangrowth. Um, it can wall both of them quite nicely. Like, yes, I can run, like, SD on both of these. But, like, straight up, these two, like, the way that I'm running them, Tangrowth is the biggest threat to them. So being able to get rid of it like that is great. This also works really well against Grand Bull, being able to sub up, then Thousand Waves, then Toxic. Because I designed this Bulu um, so that defensive Grand Bull's play rough is not a 2 at KO on me. So I can take the player off and then proceed to protect, substitute where I'm down. It's not going to be as effective on Gramble though, because uh, Gramble most likely will have Heal Bell. So against the Gramble matchup, I'll probably play it a bit safer and go like Tentacruel or even into uh, potentially Kartana, just because it's not worth that risk. But this is also really nice if uh, Mew has already been poisoned by the Toxic Spikes, because then I can, you know, sub Thousand Waves. If he is a more defensive spread without Ice Beam as well, I might be able to just wall him out. So that's really, really nice to be able to um, have this Zygarde here to trap and take care of a few mons on my opponent's team, weaken them down, uh, and open the door for some of these things. So oh, I should also explain, like, defensively. Um, so enough HP to have 404. It's just a really good HP stat to get to with subs. Um, enough speed to outspeed, like I said, Bishop and Swampert. Then the defensive investment to be able to take two play roughs from defensive Gramble. And then the rest was just chucked into Spit F to try and take as many hits as possible. But I'm uh, moving on to our next set here. We have a Choice Scarf Tapu Bulu. Probably greatest name in Pokemon here, Tapu Brolic. Um, this Bulu set was really important to me. I felt that this is a really good Scarfed Mon to base my team around. Again, I'm designing it to creep uh, potentially a Scarfed Bisharp, but also with that um, investment in speed, it allows speed everything on my opponent's team that is not Scarfed, so that's really nice. Rock Slide is there basically just for Tornadus if I need to knock that thing straight out. Uh, mainly though I'm going to be clicking Wood Hammer. Scarf Wood Hammer does an absolutely tremendous amount to his entire team. Horn Leech is there just if I don't need to click Wood Hammer in a situation, like if I can just clean with Horn Leech, that's cool. And Super Power is there just to absolutely blow away things like the Bisharp, don't need to see that thing cause me any issues. 
like I said, if Zygarde can get rid of um, Tangrowth, it really opens the door for Bulu to just spam Woodhammer against a lot of my opponent's team. Although I'm not adamant, I'm still doing a ridiculous amount to most mons on his team. And like I said with the Bishop situation, if it gets up the SD against Nihilego, I can outspeed Bishop 110%, take the Sucker Punch like a champion, and just knock it straight out with superpower. So it's never going to be too hectic of a threat to deal with, I feel, in this matchup. And this is just a really strong, solid Pokemon for the team. Uh, I'm not really going to go into too much more detail about this because like, it's pretty straightforward, speed creeping, and then the rest just goes into HP for that little bit of extra bulk. But uh, moving on, we have Akini Omega for Kartana. Uh, basically, the initial sets that I came up with for these two uh, were a bit different, but I decided to go with these two choice sets because I felt they combined perfectly together. So Bulu's Scarf is really good because it clears out some stuff, and then Kartana is probably the premier wall breaker on my team for this week because... Uh, if Tangrowth does go down with that trapping technique that I try, then he has no switch in for Kartana. Kartana effectively can 2 KO every single Pokemon on my opponent's team. Uh, under Grassy Terrain, Leaf Blade basically just destroys everything. Like, he has no good switch ins. Uh, Sacred Sword is there just for Bishop. Again, like I said, if it's starting to run away with it, I need to be able to take it out. Boom, it'll go. Smart Strike, obviously, there for things like the Gramble. If any of that taken out, X is there for Mew and Tangrowth. However, if Grassy Terrain is up, then uh, Leaf Blade is great. Um, with that young Beast Boost, you get that attack raise. The dumb thing with Band is that it takes Kartana to almost base 700 attacks. So I'm literally cleaning through so many Mons. It's really important too because Kartana creeps um, Keldeo. So it outspeeds like almost everything on his team, barring uh, Tornado. So I can just absolutely run through. If he's not running Scarfs, then he's in for a world of pain, so that's going to be really, really good, being able to just run through my opponent's team. And honestly, this Kartana set, I think, could be the MVP, because if Bulu sets up the grassy terrain, or everything else has been, like, weakened beforehand, Kartana can literally just come in and clean up late game, which is great. But the other big win con on this team is uh, John Cena, the Mega Pinsir. Basically, if I am able to, especially late game, get up an SD with this mod, the game could well be over. Um, Return is just a fantastic stab move to go for, just like runs through his team, but as you can see, I'm running dual stab this week, Now, there's a very good reason for that. So, the reason I'm running dual stab Mega Pinsir is because not only does um, x do more to certain mons, but it's crucially doing more to certain mons. I feel that there are a few different options that Seb could go for with his ways of dealing with Mega Pinsir. One of them I see being a physically defensive Mew, because physically defensive Mew can take a plus two return even after rocks. However, what Mew can't take is a plus two X Scissor. X Scissor will Oko fully defensive Mew. He could be Tanger, but that would just be a ridiculously good tech on his part. Um, and yeah, like, kudos to him for that. But I feel like that won't be the uh, prep that he brings, and X Scissor will be able to Oko that. It Oko's Tangrowth, because another thing you could do is try and be Cobra Berry Tangrowth, try and bait it in on the setup, and then proceed to Rock Slide and kill me, whereas I can just go for X Scissor and knock it straight out and not have an issue. And then you're wondering, Verd, why do you see Faint there? Well, actually, Faint is there because of things like the um, Tornadus and also Keldeo in Rain. Uh, when it comes to choosing it over Quick Attack, uh, having Faint means that I'll outspeed the Prankster priority on Tornadus. So if it is below, like, 60%, plus 2 Faint will knock it out, meaning it doesn't get off a Rain Dance for Swampert, doesn't do any of those shenanigans, doesn't go for, you know, like, potentially Chester Resto. It's really important to do that against him. Um, and then... The uh, Faint is also there for potential Aqua Jet Keldeo in Rain if he does go for it. I don't think it's very likely, it won't really do that much, but it's also just nice to have it there potentially to uh, get some damage off for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the team. Like, There's no real speed. It's basically just outspeeding Garchomp again. I do feel if he's going to bring Garchomp, it's either going to be a bulky Rock Setter or it's going to be an Offensive Choice Scarf user. I don't really see a middle ground. Like He could bring Z Garchomp in webs, but... I don't know how he confident he feels about keeping webs up since he doesn't really have a spin blocker on his team. So, yeah, threat-wise, looking at his roster, probably one of the biggest threats that I can see potentially is uh, Resto Chesto Tornadus. Could be annoying. Um, I feel like my team can still deal with it. Kartana still does like a ridiculous amount if it attacks it. Um, Bulu's Woodhammer and Rock Slide still hurt it a lot. Like it can bulk up, but they hurt a lot. And also like Zygarde, just with the set that it has, if he um. Uh, obviously I can sub up and like I can toxic but it is definitely a dangerous set luckily tentacle can kind of deal with it too with the scold and whatnot basically the the premise is the entire team can kind of work as a unit uh, one of the other cool things I can do is force it to go for rest then go into pincer SD up because he has to waste a sleep turn and then 
proceed to click return and basically knock him out. Or the other thing is that with the bulk upset, if I can keep Nihilego around, then that is also a uh, check to it as well with the Thunder. So definitely a threatening one to go up against, but I feel like he also might not bring it like speed wise he could, but I think it's more he'll design it to be more of a rain setter for this matchup as I do have a few ways to deal with um, that kind of thunder reset. Like if he was, uh, sorry, that tornado set, if he was the bulk up one with superpower and uh, acrobatics, then he would just basically lose to my Rotom. So I think that's definitely going to be something that maybe psychs him out from doing that. He may run knock off instead of not bulk up. So I think because of that, I'll be able to scare off that set, but it's definitely one of the more dangerous ones. He also has just like a lot of scary Pokemon to deal with, but I feel the overall premise of this team works really strong. The basic premise is lead Nihilego, uh, shut down one of his leads, and then proceed to set up rocks on the second turn. So if he leads Chomp, then go for HP Ice. If he's Scarf, then perfect, because you're able to chip Scarf Chomp down like a huge amount. If you know he's going to go for EQ again, you can go out to Bulu, or potentially you can predict your opponent to uh, want to preserve the Garchomp, predicting Bulu to come in and go for Stealth Rocks that turn, which is also really, really nice. Um, Tentacruel is designed to deal with things like uh, the Mega Swampert and even Garchomp to an extent. Get up those T-Spikes and just really wear things down. Zygarde is there to trap the Tangrowth. Bulu, Kartana kind of just break through his team over time with Grassy Terrain boosted offense. And then Mega Pinsir just kind of cleaned. If it lets me get up a clean SD, then it's uh, it's just over. So yeah, that's basically the team. I I'm pretty excited for this matchup, honestly. I'm really just keen to see how the... um. MPL season goes. I know Seb is a phenomenal player, so it's going to take my absolute best effort to uh, beat him, but I'm very confident with this team and the way that it runs, and hopefully we can get that W, but that's going to do it for this first week of team building, guys. If you did enjoy this uh, video, make sure that you like the video. Don't forget to also subscribe to the channel. Go check out the MPL channel as well, and also go check out Seb's channel. They're all the be linked in the description, but yeah, that's going to do it for me, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and um, next time you see me, We'll be taking on Top Tier Boy in the first round of the NPL. But uh, as always, guys, my name is The Verd, and I'm out this bitch.